Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today, including a couple eruptive behaviors on our star. All our news today is confined to the inner solar system as we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star took the SDO roll jitters. They flipped the satellite to cool the sun-facing side. And now we're going to re-watch what's happening at the bottom of the screen as the southern filament collapsed, producing a tsunami of plasma confined to the corona. And of course, as we saw in the opening sequences, a large, now departed plasma filament lifted and erupted off the northwestern limb. Neither of those events are headed at Earth. And we come to the solar wind where top line, purple on the left, yellow on the right, show the plasma speed of the solar wind, and it is decreasing. Bottom line, you can see the geomagnetic conditions are quieting, very quiet. Little sun diving comet caught here on Soho. It's a member of the Kreutz family in all likelihood, who was only briefly illuminated before it broke apart on approach. Folks, the crazy hail continues. This was Tuesday night on a flight that had to divert to New York after the hail warning radar system failed on the plane, or at least didn't properly judge the hail risk. National Weather Service is highlighting one of the best storm outflows from cold air dropouts. Concentric circle emanating from this storm is a rare sighting, indicating an extra strong cloudburst and downdraft. Interesting article up next about how the Earth was made. The earlier they look in time, the less they're able to find evidence of subduction, plate tectonics, etc. It much more resembled the drift or static concepts of the early Earth history. Quick stop at Venus next, about as far as we get from the Earth and Sun today. They are set to commission the Veritas mission, namesake of one of the better revealers of truth on the internet, and hopefully soon, the name of the next generation of Venus Explorer spacecraft, link below. Up next, it's Cyclone Amphan from earlier this year in May. They are noticing a pattern that may have caused upper tropospheric waveforms to trigger the storm formation and intensification below. Folks, those waves are modulated by solar activity, and while those energies can help a storm in some cases, the wrong kind of waveform triggered by the sun, forced onto an existing formation situation in terms of the tropics, can do the opposite. Up next is some quick looks at GPM data compilations. On the global map, we see the annual shift of the intertropical convergence zone as if the Earth breathes in and out over the year. But we see the same thing over a day's time with the diurnal precipitation patterns for the U.S. and maritime continents, just like it's breathing in and out that solar energy each day, and it is coupled to the Carnegie curve of the global electric circuit. Interesting story about the extreming of weather in South America. Both flood and drought are becoming more extreme in the last hundred years. It is linked to a 10-year periodicity and expanding Hadley cell. Well, the last hundred years is when the magnetic field of Earth really began to weaken. The Cato periodicities in the weather are due to solar cycles, and the expected result of the weaker South Atlantic anomaly magnetic field is an expanded Hadley cell. Not to mention that South Atlantic Anomaly is exactly where this weather extreming is taking place. And so that brings us to what could happen under this weaker field. A solid confirmation here that Solar Flare Class can be one of the best means by which to judge the strength of a CME, and therefore its geo-effectiveness. This gives credence to that chart we have on spaceweathernews.com, what we've done some videos on as well, showing that with Earth's currently weakening magnetic field, what level of flare is likely to cause major grid collapse? We also have the colored scale for shifting risk profile based on elevated KP index. The best math on this suggests we have about a 25% chance of losing it all this upcoming cycle, and that's if the field doesn't weaken anymore. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Quick note, on Saturday morning I'll be camping with my family, and so while no morning update is expected, I have scheduled a very fun video to come out at that normal time, so be on watch for that. We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our star to close, and of course we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear, be safe everyone.